have you ever noticed your kids picking up on your habits? Mm, while well, they might not express their observations openly, kids are keen observers. It's been revealed kids pick up on subtle cues and reactions and use this to shape their own development. So what behaviours should you be modelling for the next generation? For more, let's bring in parenting educator Lael Stone. Great to have you with us. So uh, you say kids can't be what they can't see. What do you mean? What I mean by that is children are constantly watching. Right from the very beginning when they're little babies, they're observing their environment. So they make sense of the world by watching what we do. So if we want our children to be empathetic humans, we have to model empathy. If we want our kids to you know, have good work ethics, we have to demonstrate that. So I think the kids can't be what they can't see really is about what are we modelling and showing them. And, and I think the tricky parts of that is we often have this, you know, do as I say, not do as I do, but our kids mm. are always watching. So I think it's something we need to be really, really uh, mindful of. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? You've started um, by listing the three most common behaviours that we can model for our kids, starting by us looking in the mirror. Yes, well, I think the way we talk about our bodies, the way we take care of them, the way we look at ourselves when we're, you know, when we're getting ready, our kids are always watching that as well. And, and I think body image is a huge issue these days and I think we want our kids to have a really strong, positive image of their bodies. And so, you know, it can be really helpful for us to stand in front of the mirror and go, how amazing is my body? Look how strong it is. You know, look what mm. it does for me. Because those subtle messages are things that children take on board. Mm. No, it's really important, isn't it? The next thing we can model is empathy. And you touched on that there and people's emotions. Why is it important? And especially if you've got a screaming toddler, why is it important to do it at that point? Yeah. Because I think children, again, they're learning about the world from what we're modelling to them. And when it comes to feelings like anger and sadness, we have to show our kids healthy ways to process and move that. So if we yell a lot, which I know all parents do at some point, right, parenting is stressful, you know, we want to show them healthy ways to move to anger. So, you know, when we get angry, maybe we shake our body, maybe we go for a run, maybe we talk to someone. And I think those things help our children develop empathy and compassion when we show them healthy ways to process those feelings and then meet them in that way as well. Mm. What about apologising or admitting you're wrong yes. as a parent? Yes. That can be hard. It can be so hard, but I think that, again, sets up really beautiful imprints around just being human and being mm. vulnerable. So I think when we do have, you know, tension with our kiddos, which happens all the time, it's really important that as the adult we go back and repair in a healthy way. So we not only show them how it can be done, but then they also get an internal experience of it so then they can take that out into the world as well. Just really quickly too, is it ever too late to change our behaviour? It is never, ever too late. I think our children are constantly watching and even as they become adult kids it's never too late for us to look at our own stories and, and you know figure out who we right. want to be in the world so we can model that for them. Oh, we can still fix a couple of those things. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. good to know. Thank you very much Lyle. Thank you. Still ahead this morning.